Final Fantasy 16 has released its demo, and with roughly two hours of gameplay, there's already so much to dissect from the music, the sound, the voice acting, to the combat system, whether that be the basic combat or the icon battles. And so I wanted to hop on today and do a little bit of a non-spoiler demo review. When I say non-spoiler, I'm specifically referring to the important storyline and plot points, but I do want to get into what I already think is an indication that this is going to be a masterpiece, that it's going to be one of not only the greatest Final Fantasy games of all time, but likely one of the greatest games we'll get this year, and a game that I already think is going to be setting a precedent for a lot of games to come. I know that that's absolutely absurd high praise for just two hours of gameplay, but really those two hours of gameplay I thought were absolutely phenomenal. I want to kick it off by getting into the storytelling. I'll start with the pacing and what the general synopsis is. We follow a young man named Clive whose responsibility is to protect the phoenix. And you see that there is a bond between these two. I won't reveal how deep that bond is or what draws them together so strongly, but you do see that Clive is very protective of the phoenix. He is going to do whatever he can to enhance his skills. And so you actually start with a more present day plot line and you see this epic battle. You don't really know how Clive is involved with it all, but there's a lot of indications that Clive has lost very much. He seems to be recalling some events of the past, and then after seeing this grand opening, you actually go to the past, and that's where the gameplay starts. From what we've been told about the structure of the game, we are going to be getting this story in pieces from the different points of Clive's life. That always makes me a little hesitant because I think when you have a lot of distance from the character through time, that can result in not feeling as connected to them, not feeling as connected to the story. But if the prologue is anything to go by, I'm already so incredibly invested in Clive's story. The prologue does take you through that earlier part of his life. And after those events, I now have certain hints of how what's happened then is going to connect to what's happened in present day without having the full story. Clearly, there's so much between the two that has been left for you to discover, which is really exciting. And for those of you that are book fans, it reminded me in some ways of Stormlight Archive, where you see bits and pieces of present day and the past. And as you're getting these pieces revealed to you, the greater story is being unveiled. So I'm really excited at the prospect of there being this timing split in order to tell the full story of Clive's life. All that said, because the demo is just a couple of hours, a couple of hours is not very much time to really connect you to this very grand plot and make you feel that connected to the character themselves. I'm kind of laughing at myself as I'm saying this because that's about the length of a lot of movies. <laughs> but as somebody who loves books and prefers shows over movies and games, I think have the potential to tell the best stories, two hours is not a lot. But within those two hours, the other elements of the game that fall into the storytelling really do a fantastic job of establishing your connection to these characters. So one of the things I was not expecting to be so hard hitting was the sound. We know that the music in Final Fantasy games is phenomenal, and that is no different here. Final Fantasy 16 already is showing itself to have fantastic music. When you get this big epic battle, the music that goes alongside it is fantastic. The sound effects of the battle itself are great. but I'm more so referring to specific elements of the voice actors and then also sounds that are occurring. There's a particular part and I can't reveal what is going on in this moment, but you just hear something being beaten and it doesn't shy away from you hearing that sound. I visibly <laughs> was uncomfortable and I felt it in a, in a sense, not literally, I'm not being tortured or beaten, but I, I reacted to just that sound alone. And then with the voice acting, all the voice actors thus far, I've really, really enjoyed their performances. Their voices themselves are absolutely fantastic, but there's one particular moment that I think really highlights how great the voice acting is. And I'm gonna compare it to another thing that I really love, I know a lot of you really love, 
So something that the show Arcane, there's a particular scene that a lot of people highlight, and it's actually nothing to do with the voice acting, but rather how a certain scene is depicted and how honestly it's shown and how raw it's shown. And that's a, a moment with the character Powder when she's sobbing. And it shows it for what it really is. It doesn't make it a pretty thing. It doesn't make it a delicate thing. It really shows the devastation that that character is feeling. And Final Fantasy 16 did that exceptionally, in particular, the character of Clive, when you're seeing a moment that is the lowest moment of his life. And when he is angry and he's crying, the the voice acting in that moment is that same thing I was describing where it's raw and it's uncomfortable and it's devastating and it's so well done that I was sitting there like this, how is this the end of the prologue? I'll kill you! I'll fucking kill you! I already have so many emotions and I'll play entire games that the entire plot of a game won't make me feel what that one moment, let alone the whole demo, made me feel. So it definitely is utilizing everything to its advantage when it comes to sound and music. I also want to note the graphics themselves. We see so often in games now one of two extremes. We see games going, not of, always, of course, there's exceptions, but we are seeing so often now hyper-realism. You're seeing games where Horizon Zero Dawn, for example, has characters that are very clearly modeled after real people. You'll be like, is that the guy from The Wire? Or is that the lady from The Matrix? And you can just tell because it looks exactly like them. They capture the movement of these real people and then they put that into the games. And it looks incredible. And then you have games where they go a complete opposite direction. Tales of Arise, the new Zelda games, where it's hyper stylized and it doesn't make any effort to look incredibly real. It just is trying to make it look a certain way. And usually the more stylized style is going for something that's going to reflect the tone of the game, the charm or the whimsy of the game. And then you have Final Fantasy 16, or Final Fantasy in general, which it seems like it is resisting either of those extremes, where it does look somewhat realistic, but certainly not to the extreme. And then it doesn't look incredibly stylized as the other examples I gave do. And I actually think you run a risk of people thinking it doesn't look like enough of either of those things. And for me, I actually thought it worked really well. I think the question is, does it look pretty as basic and maybe kind of shallow as that sounds? Does it look pretty? Does it look nice? Does it have really great full frame shots? If you have a close up of a character, is it captured well? Is the movement itself captured well? And I think the answer for the most part is yes, especially the really big scenes. And I described before a really, really big opening that you get and you get a battle between these icons. And that alone was such a feast for the eyes. It was so satisfying to watch. It was so cool to just sit back and be like, yes, because I'm the kind of person that if a cutscene does not pull me in with its story or look incredible, then I'm like, eh, I don't really care. <laughs> I don't need to sit here and see poorly animated things, saying things that don't really matter. So you gotta, you gotta pull me in. If I'm not gonna actually be playing the game and I'm just gonna be sitting there, I need to be invested. And I think they've done a great job of that. Where I'm gonna have a tiny bit of criticism is that there are a couple of times, and I don't know if it's just because it was a demo or if this is gonna be a thing that occurs here and there, a couple of the transitions between scenes or segueing from a cutscene into gameplay again were not the smoothest. There's a part where a couple of characters are leaving a room and they walk out of the room and then they very distinctly turn and then walk again. And it looked kind of clunky. And then there's another time when some character says a line of dialogue to Clive and they say something like, you don't get to die today. And then they start to run off and the transition from that line of dialogue to running is a bit choppy. I only noticed it here and there, but it was choppy enough that I noticed it and it did a little bit pull me out of the game. But I really think that that's not a huge criticism at all. It doesn't take away from all the other praise I've been giving it. And it's fine. It's fine. It's not really that big of a deal, but I was hoping we wouldn't have those little tiny hiccups here and there. One other note I want to make about the graphics or just in general, the use of color more specifically, is that we see so often Final Fantasy utilize color to reflect 
the tone or the world of that particular Final Fantasy story. So in 10, it's much more colorful. And you see there's this playfulness, this hopeful energy within our characters. And I think that the colors match it. And also Sin is this darkness in Final Fantasy 10. But yet we have these characters that have so much hope that are trying to bring life back and hope back into this world. And so that's where you see so much of the color and what's worth saving. So it really, it, it's less so light and dark and more so dark and colorful. And then in seven, we have such a moody storyline and it really uses the deeper colors. And then in this one, I believe it's the first time we've gotten a M rating for a main entry of a Final Fantasy game. And I just feel like this darker, more somber, broken, character that we're following the colors used are so much gray and even when there's bright colors there's something about them that is slightly muted like it just feels as if there's a hint of a gray filter but in a good way not that it's muted and it doesn't look as clean but just rather it looks very intentional and i think i mentioned some of the stylized games you see so many games nowadays utilize colors in a way that's really satisfying and sometimes that is the main draw and so I think I'm just learning to appreciate the use of color a little bit more. And in this particular game, while I still long for the beauty that is Final Fantasy X, I don't think that that kind of color scheme would be fitting of the story that we're already presented with in this game. Switching gears now and getting into the gameplay. Because the demo is primarily introducing you to the characters, the story, the plot line, you don't get that much gameplay. But what you do get, I think, is exciting and it indicates what's to come. I do hope that the combat becomes more fleshed out and a little bit more intricate, but I think because it's the beginning of the game, it is going to be a little bit more on the basic side because it's introducing you to all of the mechanics. And I think you're gonna build from there as the game goes on. I hope so at the very least. From what I've seen of the trailers, I do believe that's the case. Some of the gameplay mechanics, in my opinion, feel like we're taking the best parts of a lot of the combat from previous Final Fantasy games. So back in the day, we used to see RPGs so often had turn-based. And then we've come very far away from turn-based. Nobody seems to want to embrace it anymore. And so a lot of RPGs get this weird hybrid of turn-based, but then also you hardly are doing anything or it's really too elaborate and it's clunky and it doesn't feel natural. And sometimes I'm like, just go back to the turn-based. Or you have times where you get the games like from software where there's not a whole lot to, you don't have crazy combinations that you have to try to memorize or anything like that, but it's about the timing and it's about precision. And this is really neither of those things. It's not turn-based, it's not basic combat, but about timing, it's more in the middle. And so you have your basic physical attacks and then you have a magic attack and you can, combine those to create combinations. And then you also have something that allows you to traverse the area very quickly, kind of like in Final Fantasy XV, where you were able to do that with that character. It has something similar. This allows you to get close to the enemy and you can combine that move with your attacks to do some additional damage. And then you have to try to stun the enemy and that's when you can really land a lot of blows. You can stagger them. But thus far, it is a little bit on the simplistic side. However, there is an element of being able to have a precision dodge and then getting in a hit in at that moment, which is exciting that they have that incorporated. They also have something that reminds me a little bit of the Gambit system of Final Fantasy XII, where with your accessories, you can make the game a little bit easier for yourself by having different combinations of accessories. So you can make it so that Clive, when he reaches a certain point in his health, will automatically use a potion. 12, if you recall, had pretty much every possible concept, idea, whatever you might wanna do in battle. It got to a point where you would have every option down to a percentage. And you could just walk into a battle, a pretty difficult one, and you could just sit back and your characters would fight for you, which is cool in theory, but it doesn't make for the most I'm actually partaking in this fight. And so I think the way the accessories are currently working in 16 makes it so that it's helpful and you might have to strategize about which ones are the best and what kind of gameplay style you wanna go for but you're still involved. There are also moments that I think are actually pulling from a lot of other really popular games that we've gotten over the years where there are cinematic 
dodges and then there's also cinematic attacks. So then every now and then during combat, you will have the enemy do something and there will be a moment where you either have to press the button that's going to allow you to dodge or you have to press the button that's going to allow you to hit. And it does make for an exciting cinematic aspect to the basic combat. And then, speaking of cinematic, you have the icon fights. So the icons are what you typically find in Final Fantasy games as the summons or just these massive beings that are very often in the Final Fantasy games. In this particular one, they are tied to an individual that's known as a dominant. So those dominants can actually become these icons. And we know that we're going to get a lot of icon battles throughout the game to the point where from the trailers I've seen, I'm blown away that that's actual gameplay and we get a taste of it in the demo. And it, it was so exciting. I didn't really expect there to be a flight element, so to speak, almost like a a game where you're some kind of airship aiming at another enemy and that enemy is weaving in and out of areas and then your character is following them and you have to try to aim and hit them. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. And then tied in with the cinematic, it just is breathtaking and stunning. And the first one we get also has a lot of emotional hits as well. So there's a part of you that's like, I don't want to be in this fight. <laughs> and that's the best. That's the best for me when you are so gripped and you feel so connected and you're like, I have to do this, I have to do this, but at the same time you you feel so conflicted. I absolutely love it. The other aspect of, of the gameplay would be the general movement, the ability to traverse the areas. And there are parts where Clive, you know, he'll have to duck under something or have to jump up on something, which I do like there's that element. It feels a little bit less confined and you have a little bit more freedom. I am excited to see if we have a bit more of an open world feeling once we get out of the demo and we can go through the map because that's something I think we haven't really felt like we have the ability to do in a lot of Final Fantasy games, just really explore the world and get into these nooks and crannies. So I'm hopeful that we'll get to do a little bit more of that. One of my very, very minor criticisms, and I think this is more of a me thing and it will just take some getting used to, is that I think the pace that our character can go versus the pace of the camera turning, if you're trying to run and look over to a certain direction, it feels like the camera is a lot slower, which in some ways is good because some games you barely move it and the camera flips really fast. But this one, it just doesn't feel like it's perfectly paced. So I actually got kind of dizzy <laughs> in a fair amount of parts. I get dizzy very easily though. So I really think this is a me thing and it didn't hinder my ability to go from one place to the next. It's not like as soon as I started moving, I was like, whoa, I can't even look at the screen right now. But it is something where other games I think have perfected the pace of the camera movement with the pace of your character. And this one, I think it's just gonna get, it's just some getting used to. As you can see, the little bit of criticisms I had were incredibly minor. I am ecstatic for this game. I think it's gonna be fantastic. I said at the beginning, I think it's gonna be a masterpiece. I really, really am curious to see the impact that this game has on gaming in general, RPGs. I don't know, I'm just really thrilled and I hope that the main game lives up to what this demo has given us because this demo was fantastic. All that to say, I would love to know your thoughts. If you want to chat spoilers about what is revealed within the demo, just make sure to write spoilers in your comment because I know there's a lot of people that are waiting till the game's release to jump in and play it all. So just be mindful of that. But anyway, please let me know your thoughts so far. If you feel very differently, if you feel similarly, I'd love to know. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you later. Bye.